sure if you have a credit card let's say the minimum payment is $25 you should be making at least $50 payment on that credit card got it if you can make a hundred dollar great but it should be at least fifty dollars and then don't keep Ooh. using them make sure that go. the lenders see that you can manage your debt because if you keep using it and spending it three years they can look back so now you know from this point forward be responsible on how you're how you're paying these debts because it could make a difference when you go to buy a house so from that same book they say the nastiest APR of them all that people don't read and just sign um, is student loans and thank god there are certain ones you know that are regulated right uh everyone hates politics but but you let people go crazy and they'll go crazy there's good certain ones for certain federal grants and stuff like that certain rules don't let companies help you with your student loans call the company so yourself. let me tell you so i got a lot of indians here listening and um you're, you're only a good kid if you're a doctor or a lawyer if not you're a failure oh. and so there's so many including my sister who's now uh, a doctor that end up going uh, to the Caribbean after UC Davis or whatever to um, uh, to to go over towards there and what they end up doing is well I can only use this loan at St George's University and but and it's the bank that they're partnered uh, with and so they end up being a non-federal type of of loan. Um, what what is my point here? There's so many people that are in student loans. Don't let what, them steer you. Yeah, what advice would you give to somebody you know who's in the cycle of student loans and uh, one things you would look at to kind of help them? Okay. On, but oh, I love it. St student loan interest. No, no, definitely. Ooh. This is among those deduction as I had I touched upon earlier. Uh, these are the remaining things that I wanted to go over. Yeah. And then I yeah. see that people have missed it. Uh, come across this thing uh, quite often. Right. So one of them is the um, student loan interest. Uh, pre folks preparing their term using a TurboTax or some sort of online and a lot of time not realizing mm. that they are also able to uh, possibly reduce their taxable income, reduce their GI by mm. deducting their student loan interest. Yeah. And then what also goes hand in hand with this thing is the education credits. Mm -hmm. uh, if you happen to be in the first four year of college education, mm -hmm. you can uh, possibly use American Opportunity Credit yeah. to optimize on the tax. And, and then the great thing about this uh, education credit is mm -hmm. that this is a refundable credit. Okay. And, and a lot of what time I see that this is overlooked. Right. Or not consistently followed from year to year. Right. Whereas you can use it in the first year of, uh, four, four year of the primary college education. And I always have to do this. I would say, Mr. Brother, can you repeat that? The the G, the G, the GI, uh, what exactly is AGI. it? AGI. AGI stands A for the Adjusted Gross Income. Okay. And uh, one more time, how would they be able to uh, get tax credit? Uh, for their payments on these student loans? Is that the, what you're saying? Especially? Actually, the deductions, they're called above the line and below the line. Okay. So as far as the student loan interest goes, this is the above the line deduction, basically reducing your AGI, AGI, again, just mm -hmm. gross income. Okay. However, when it comes to education credit, then we are talking about below the line deduction, mm -hmm. and, and this gets adjusted mm -hmm. from the AGI, mm -hmm. and this is a refundable credit. And again, this is called American Opportunity Credit. And, and do, they, do they have to do anything to qualify for this? Is there a separate form for that? They just have to kind of uh, yes, let yes, you know. Yes. Okay. All these Last thing um, in our in the mortgage industry. So I think um, execution, as far as executing the loan, is the biggest thing. Uh, a lot of clients, you know, as they're going into writing offers on homes, the sellers are being told by you know their agents and just word around that you know. We need to close quick. We need to have contingencies removed quickly. They, they want surety in your offer. Uh, unfortunately for clients, this is pretty much all out of their hands. Right? Things don't go uh, perfect. Yeah. It, it's really in the bank's hands. So like right. uh, a lot of people don't really get the opportunity to build a relationship like with their, their mortgage advisor right. when they're out shopping because they're in such a rush, right? right? So like picking the right person, I, I think is... Um, very very hard to do mm -hmm. so i you know i was thinking about this last night and i was like it it's so ingenious like 
when, when you go out and, and meet a client, like mm. you really, really build a relationship. You're out looking at homes and, and doing different things, right? Mm -hmm. Like you actually have the relationship more than, than say someone like me. True, would. true. So as someone going out and buying, like I would really put your trust in your real estate agent to guide you to the right lenders because they do this on a, on a uh, more constant basis, right, right? right? And so like a lot of times when I see transactions in our industry go sideways is when the client says, well, I have my Bank of the West guy or I have my Wells Fargo person or I have my uh, mom's friend that's in Arizona or whatever. The, I main, thing, the main thing about student loans is parents, don't co-sign your, your, your um, students' loans. They're, they're going to give them a loan to go to college. Don't co-sign it. Right. Because once you co-sign, I like um, the income-based repayment plan. And what that is, is once someone has graduated, it's time to start making payments. You can even enter these programs before um, they're due. But once you get the loan, and it has to be a federal loan, not a private loan, mm. but you call the student loan company and you ask them for an income-based repayment plan. So, And when you call them, you call them when times are down, not when you have a great paying job, mm. because you can get a payment based on your income. We had a client that went from a $600 payment down to a $60 payment. Mm. If you're not making any money, let's say the student's still in school and they don't have an income, that income be, can be zero for the first year. Right. Every year they're gonna check your credit. This goes for 25 years. At the end of 25 years, they forgive the rest of the loan. It's awesome. It's gone. Was that the loan forgiveness program type thing? It's, uh, it's okay. There is other loan forgiveness with okay. student loans. If you're yeah. a teacher who's or a public service worker, there's other forgiveness programs. If you work for a nonprofit for 10 years, you can right. get forgiveness. And sometimes it depends on, they'll give a scale of, of that. We literally don't know what we don't know. But so, I'm going to tell you, please, if, please. if a parent has co-signed a student loan, they do not qualify for income-based repayment. Say that one more time. If, if you if you are a parent signs for that student loan, you yeah. cannot get an income based repayment plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, parents, I know we all feel like we're obligated to put our kids through college, but guess what? The college is going to put them in. When I my kids went to college, I had gone through my financial mess. I could not co sign that. It wasn't any good to it. And guess what? My kids made it anyway. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, so just don't let them do it. Don't, um, it's hard to get them off, it's hard to get off the loan once your, your child graduates also. They want to hold everybody on the hook for these mm -hmm. loans. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, there's student loans out there, 200000 300000 you know, so much money. Parents, stay away from it. Got it. And Diana agrees. So, so we're a mortgage banker, meaning we fund, we fund like 90% of the loans that we write. So all the whole process happens here on site at this office in Campbell, okay. uh, which makes execution very easily uh, done for a new buyer. Got it. Uh, now there's also broker banks where we basically send the loan off to a different bank and they, they do all the uh, underwriting and draw, doc drawing and funding and it's really out of our hands. Mm -hmm. uh, you lose a lot of control of the transaction and can really, you're just a number in a, in a pool pretty much at that, that point. Right. So I, we do both. Um, mm -hmm. The reason we do both is because we don't always have the products in-house that, that brokers have. Got so it. we want to be able to service the client for whatever the program is that they might need and have, have something that fits their needs and you know financial situation. Agree with me and please correct me if I'm wrong that I can uh, time to time, maybe every six months if I remember correctly, call them up and say, hey, my limit's 5000 I would love, uh, I got some expenses, things coming up. I need 25000 yeah. And I did that with American Express. Boom, they granted it. So now, because I'm with the parents, I don't have a mortgage. I don't have those type of things. I now had four cards that, that had 5000 that I slowly got. And I now have four cards that have 25000 limits. That's awesome. And um, one thing that Daniel mentioned yesterday is if you're not using that card, uh, the worst thing um, you know you can do is people think, okay, I paid that thing off. Let me close it. No, don't close credit cards. God, I, if you I, close I, credit card cards, you're going to drop your credit. And my mother, our CFO, did that. Once you have eight oh, years worth of history on a her, credit card on your credit report, if you close it, you will drop your score forty points. You hear that? Don't close credit cards. Use them once every four to six months. Yeah. Make or, sure you buy a take a ca uh, take a gas cup of coffee and then pay it off. Yep. 
Or uh, one thing again, Roman would say was instead of his opinion is variable costs on your check cards as far as credit cards, use fixed costs, meaning ones that are monthly bills because you can automate and pay them uh, off. Would you agree, Ruth, that with that card, whatever your Netflix bill, your your magazine yes. bill, your nine ninety nine, I agree. It, it's it's no use to you if you do not. Um, kind of use that set of automatic bill to that 999 Netflix on that card that's zero instead of closing it mm -hmm. and have it pay itself off because what does that do, Ruth? It actually kind of, I guess, utilizes that card, builds your credit, you would say? Yeah, okay. If you have a great credit score, pay your credit cards off every month. If you're trying to build your credit score, you need it to increase, don't pay the balances off every month. Mm -hmm. Leave a small balance, like one mm -hmm. month could be a dollar, next month could be three dollars, next could be five dollars. Because if you pay it off to zero, every month then what the being reported is zero it looks stale right okay, so you need to make sure your credit's getting used now mm -hmm. the only time you don't want to do that is if you have a large credit card like a twenty five thousand dollar limit and mm -hmm. you have it high and you leave a dollar you could get charged interest for all of that because you didn't pay it off so don't listen to me if you have a large credit card but if you're trying to build your credit cards do not pay them off every uh, month in to zero mm -hmm. switch them up um, leave a small balance Let's talk about APR for a second. Albert Einstein, what did he say? The greatest invention ever uh, created for man was compounding interest. That's, that, that's. There are a lot of overlooked deductions that I come across. And, 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 and these are the folks, a lot of time I see that they have been preparing their own returns. And uh, thinking they're going to save money by doing thinking, it. <laughs> and, and, and ease and, and, you know, basically, uh, you know, trying to. Arun said, "A stitch in time saves nine. Here you go. He's, he's like you. He's, he's that way. I yeah. love it, Arun. Sorry to mean to cut, and, cut you off. Yeah, and 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 a lot of times, uh, you know, again, we go back to that checklist, and then we learn that they have been missing out on number of these deductions, which could have given them much more than they were trying to save. And 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 definitely, and I like to go over a few of the things that are." Very common, and then I get to see on those uh, tax returns Please. that the people have attempted to or or have you know done on their own, mm -hmm. and and one of them is 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 kind of stands out is a charitable contributions, and I, I'm sure people know okay you know they are deductible to the extent you know based on the uh, threshold, and they do, do they have to have, they have, to have a nonprofit uh, identification number correct? Yes, you you gotta look out for those. Okay, but apart from that. Uh, you know, not having their uh, all the records handy God. and hesitation okay, and sure. the amount that they have paid. But within this category, there is a, another uh, 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 area what, where they what lose out. What qualifies as a donation? Uh, qualifies and also a lot of time people overlook on the non-cash charitable contributions. So they do have the copy of the check you know, if they if they paid via credit card or whatnot to any of the eligible um, uh, agency or institution. But, you know, you may have also uh, contributed or donated item to, for, let's say, for example, to Goodwill, mm -hmm. Salvation Army. Oh, like clothes, items? But absolutely. Okay. okay and, cool. and, I love it. And, 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 and I see that even they have in most cases, but they never thought or it did not occur to them that they could also claim a deduction for those. Right. And, what, what would you recommend they do? Just take an itemized, because obviously realistic situation, they got that garbage bag ready. These are uh, clothes kind of from the past. You, you would just like them to kind of make their own quick, just itemized inventory in their mind? No, no. Uh, what, what they need in this regard is, and, and that is applicable to the folks who are claiming the itemized deduction, not for the folks who are just claiming the standard deduction. Got it. But if you are claiming the itemized reduction and you have donated uh, items or household uh, okay, things yeah, yeah. to these, uh, you know, uh, which are basically non-cash, whether it is mm -hmm. household goods, uh, clothes, uh, shoes, furniture, or whatnot, mm -hmm. uh, you want to make sure that you have uh, the receipt from these uh, institutions or shops okay. or charities, and also you have a uh, that's why it's so important to keep all those you have a, some uh, record keeping so if things will come back your way then you have a way of basically valuing ah, okay. these things 
to claim in your tax return. And in 2017, it sounds like that's not realistic for somebody who's listening, but it's completely realistic, and that's why you always encourage us to uh, you know, do your best, put it on credit cards and so forth, because in 2017, you can go further back, right? Most cards with those statements that say you got something four years ago, you're about to donate it. Yes. Uh, it's going to be fairly easy to pull up uh, the invoice uh, for that, right? Abs have it itemized. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, that and then, uh, like this, there's another area where I see, not that people didn't want it, but they were not even aware of the due date criticality. So, for example, uh, when they see that they can save the money uh, by putting uh, uh, some funds in the traditional IRA account. Mm. However, they have filed the extension, but were not aware that the plan had to be set up by the early due date, which was the original due date, April 15. Mm. And you had to contribute by then. Mm. You file the extension, you know, under the assumption that you will be able to contribute mm. after April 15. And when we get to that tax return, we realize, okay, they wanted, they meant it. However, they did not didn't do fall within that time. Frame. Absolutely. Um, and eventually that contribution ended up going towards the following year, not for the year that you meant it. Right. People ask me all the time, can I settle this debt? If you haven't gone late, the creditor is not going to settle. Mm -hmm. I've tried, even for elderly people, I've tried. Mm -hmm. and, and, and unfortunately, they had to go late, then I settled the debt right away, in mm -hmm. six months late. It's crazy the way that it works. So you purposely want them to go late one month, but they trust yeah, you because you're in their hands. And, oh, because that allows was, okay, you. Right, because this lady, she was, an el she was a mother mm -hmm. of, of a friend of mine. Right. And she wasn't, he was taking care of her bills. Mm -hmm. So Good man. what happened was that they, it was Bank of America. They mm -hmm. wouldn't settle. So we decided she didn't need her credit, yeah, yeah. To be, you know, for anything. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and let her go late. Right. And then six months in, they... No, I, I would trust you because sometimes there's a method. I that, don't like to tell people no, they're no, no. late. <laughs> no, no, but you, you're being honest and transparent. And that's why they respect you because sometimes... Even what sounds like the wrong thing allows the loophole for the, for you to be able to do the next thing, right? right? And if there's trust there and they know it, then in a heartbeat, I would tell my client, go late so you're allowed to uh, do that. Um, because there's always a method to the madness, right? right. Um, right. Uh, but, so once they do go late, now you have the ability to do to what? Settle. To settle. Does yeah, that include APR? I, I, well, the, what APR, does settle, what does settle mean APR for layman's terms? APR is a whole different, people different who don't, might not know. Uh, thing here. Settling an account is to pay less than what you, uh, say your balance is. Minimum payment, that kind of thing. Well, let's say that, that you have a balance, a credit card of $10,000 and it's, you're hurting to, to try and pay it. Well, if, once you start to go late, most of the creditors will settle for 50%. So if you have 5000 you can pay it off, you're done. The credit card's closed, you cannot use it again, mm -hmm. but now you've gotten rid of that debt. And most people at that point, they just want to get rid of debt. People that have gone through bankruptcy, they walk out going, I will never have another credit card in my life. Well, guess what? You have to have credit mm -hmm. cards in order to actually function okay and we both remember we having those buy thoughts any real right? estate. yes when i but, went through my mess i said never again mm -hmm. but you have to in order to move forward you just have to use it in a smart way mm -hmm. like he said put the um put your comcast bill on your credit card mm -hmm. Pay your gas. Put your groceries on your credit card. The cash that you'd normally use to pay those at the store, mm -hmm. then go and pay your credit card. Right. So that way you're using it responsibly and you're not creating debt. Yep. Because uh, people are so afraid of the credit cards because they say, that's too yeah. much debt. That's well, the crazy no, no, no. part to me. It's such an... Use a two of everything. The checklist we want. W-2s we want. Hey, so I have a, a quick, easy system that I can send out to you or any client that I have. They can log in, mm -hmm. make a password uh, secured site. Mm -hmm. All the documents that we need are in there. Uh, as you start uploading stuff, I actually get notified on my end so my okay. team can start pulling it and putting your file together. Got it. Uh, I usually like to try and meet clients in person because uh, you know buying a house is a big thing and uh, by phone or phone communicating, there's always, it's, mm -hmm. it's not as strong as being in person and seeing the numbers and really understanding the process. Right. Uh, if some so right, the clock is, is ticking. Um, 
Real quick, um, I know we have an order of things, but one thing, you know, thinking about these guys and, and giving uh, them value, one common myth, you know, that I was reading that I was talking to Mr. Shivarthi about before is, you know, sometimes even newbies, and I was that ignorant guy as well, Mr. Shivarthi's taught me so, so much, <clears throat> but the crazy part is how uh, damn patient he is uh, with me. I learned later something that I was saying to him that I was completely wrong, and if it was me on the other side, I would be like... Let me educate you real quick, but instead Mr. Barthy just stays quiet, calm, and just instructed me anyways. And later on, I look at how stupid I was for, for saying that to Mr. Barthy. But what I was talking about was refunds, and often people time will look at things and and say, "Oh man, I didn't I didn't get a refund. I was expecting more of a refund." And what I realized was, in the big scheme of things. The most ideal, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Barthi, is you want to like break even essentially and, and you know, uh, get part of a refund because essentially what happens, Mr. Barthi, is when you do get a huge refund, it really means that you're overpaying quite a bit, right? And that's what I was talking about was, you know, you want a CPA will help you get a 0%, you know, interest basically loan uh, of Uncle Sam, meaning, you know, and the opposite is if you would be short. Right. If you'd be short, then obviously, um, could you break that down? Explain that because yeah, sure. I don't know what I'm uh, talking about. <laughs> no, no, definitely. Basically, it all boils down to the another component of our tax and accounting service, which is a tax money. So, uh, if you are expecting a refund, then it is for a simple reason that you have overpaid, mm -hmm. and you have overpaid your money simply for no reason. Probably you didn't know exactly what you should have paid in the first place. Mm -hmm. and not knowing your financial situation or personal finances. Mm -hmm. So the ideal situation is that you want to come close to break even mm -hmm. where you have not parked your money, which mm -hmm. you could have used otherwise yep. in other potential good yep. uh, investments mm -hmm. possibly mm -hmm. or, or for other greater use or better use. Or better and, use. and the chances are until you have somebody investigate and, and examine, yeah, they can straight up be like, Actually, you can save about eight thousand uh, dollars here, and you're not doing that correctly. And guess what? That just like paid three times over um, what you you know could have paid. Um, you know the average uh, C or CPA. So um, that is just there's so many reasons on top of that, and that's what you know really my goal was aside from giving you guys values to let you know you know when you're having that conversation. And often people you know I know first generation generation immigrants they want the best for their parents, but uh, their parents will end up, you know, just from um, call it ego, call it call it whatever, say that, you know, we don't need one. We could do it ourselves. We could do this. And even though they haven't been in any bad situations, they could be saving money. So I got one. Talk about techniques, techniques and strategies. I believe it's a psychology when paying off uh, debt. Um, the reality is people have four cards. They're in over their heads, right? And they mm -hmm. get that $800 paycheck. So what are they going to do with the minimum payments out there? They're going to take whatever they have left of that $800 and divide it by four and put all four towards there. But then they're playing the rat race game. Some yes. people talk about, and again, Ruth's going to be impressed that I know all this, uh, <laughs> the snowball method. Yes. and other methods yes. and for those of you listening who don't know correct me if i'm wrong the snowball uh, ball method means okay you have those four cards but um which whatever card has the least amount of debt uh, make the minimum payments on the other ones but the one that has the least uh go god i'm such a, a cursor i was gonna say go balls out on that go all out on that card and uh and, and immediately get that one aggressively paid first, and then the next, uh, respectively, and the next, and the next. That's a snowball method. Okay, I agree what with that. What are you, no, no, it's okay, there's many. I agree with that method, except for you don't have to pay that one off completely. Get it under the 30%. Got it. Good. Then hop to the next one. Got it. So once it's under 30%, your, your uh, FICO score is being increased by five points. Mm. Once you get it under 15% of the limit, you're increasing your score 15 points. Mm. So don't worry about paying it off completely. Absolutely, but get them down under at least 30%, then hop to the next one. Got it. So then I would make the minimum payments on the ones under 30% right. and make larger chunk payments on the larger ones. Got it. This one's not local, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to make someone drive here. And, and this, this, state, sound, right? this sounds silly, but can you stress the importance of how important it is uh, to be honest 
down every single thing like let's be let's keep it real like because uh, that's what I have to tell my clients that in negotiation too we're all in that I used to be the, that, that paranoid uh, mode when it comes to sharing information uh, well why do you need that uh, how, how do you need that well let's not no we can't show him uh, that but what I tried to say is Put your trust in that person. Share all your information completely because the more information he has, the, the better he can make decisions on, okay, how do we find a way uh, to find the solution for Joe or Jill? This is the outcome they're looking for. The routes may change, but the outcome should stay the same. So the, may, the more that we're transparent, we give all information. It sounds like a, a silly uh, question, but I feel that's yeah, important because I'm trying to think like like them. So you know? I'm so I'm actually I'm on your team, right? right. So... Um, Anything that I don't know is just going to create issues down the road when the underwriters do figure it out, uh, and they will figure it out every time. That's the thing. Um, so my goal is to structure the loan or, or put you in a, a, a bank that will allow whatever the issue might have been, or maybe there is no issue and you exactly. can go anywhere and we go get you the best interest rate. Right? And it might not even be an issue, like you said. It's smaller than you think in, in your mind, right? Yeah. So yeah. be open, be transparent about it, and yeah. uh, that way early on he can save uh, us all time and find like a, yeah. a solution uh, for it. Um, why, why W2s, savings, checkings, accounts, mm -hmm. uh, what else? So, um, uh, just off the top of my head, you see these annoying, annoying uh, my like you uh, commercials that have been coming up about you know uh, getting a return on your taxes when you're driving to and from work. But people got to make sure that they're doing that uh, correctly, right? I mean, how does that, we do use our cars for business when we drive to and from? This is some app I'm talking about that was just spending a lot of money on YouTube uh, for a little while. Um, how how does that? play in because is it true that if you aren't right you're off of it uh but if you're overcompensating that can really bring the eyeballs on you too right yes how do you how do you go about that yes uh, this is, this is a, how do that. That definitely yeah. definitely it's a very uh tricky and very important area and and it gets a lot of uh ir suspension mm. uh for example like you you pointed out to and from work mm. well uh the clients and taxpayer needs to understand mm -hmm. yes you can drive from and home to the office mm -hmm. and back and forth but these are not necessarily considered mm -hmm. the business miles mm -hmm. and not deductible unless you operate from your home mm -hmm. and you drive to see clients and, and buy things and 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 make trips using your car Interesting. then it's much more flexible and then you can count those but if you were to drive from your home to your office mm -hmm. and then come back so it swaps it's, yeah. it's 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 considered personal or commuting mile and they are not deductible right so again this this is like one of those things uh which can be you know overflated mm -hmm. and 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 may have this uh you may have this expenses stand out right and and opens up to a lot more irs scrutiny right right so uh and also changes your bottom line Mm -hmm. Like I was saying, this is also one of those things. So this is one of the uh, highly looked at area, one of the area, one of the expense, one of the deduction that uh, gets uh, uh, more attention comparing to some others. By that times the amount of people that are actually with the bank and it makes them incredible, incredible amounts of money, which immediately made me switch to Charles Schwab for my, my check card just because they have little things where no matter what ATM you go to at the end of the month, they'll return you back the fees. Um, you know, I suggest you guys don't take anything we say for fact. Always question us, double check, get your second opinions, find a, uh, a middle route, you know, uh, to it. And uh, as I said, like... Uh, with other people, if there's something you could DM us later and say that, you know, or fact check us or correct us on something, I would never get angry. I would be stoked and happy uh, to share it with everybody uh, else because that's how we learn things, right? Um, and I think that's the uh, the most important thing about this whole thing is go to, go to someone, get second opinions, go to somebody like a Daniel. Authorized user. We're at the end of the month. So they if you call the, the creditor now, mm -hmm. then... Um, is they'll report it so he could buy his house at the beginning of next month. All right, Steve, thank so. you for joining us. All right. I, uh, I know we can go into the business portion for those who have business, but I'm thinking in my mind, I was explaining this to one of my uh, clients, right? Um, he has part ownership uh, in, in a gym, but essentially, you know, I guess he doesn't have good enough 
paper trail in that for it to really be an asset as you know i was helping him out with a loan and uh how so he invested in this his name you know went with like legal zoom you know he has a partner uh in it but he essentially said you know i'll be 50 percent owner gave him the startup costs and then said um you know what i know you're gonna ramp up for the first three years um I don't want any uh, ch checks. I don't want you to cut any checks for me, right? Essentially thinking that it's going to save. But my question is, uh, then when th the bank comes across, yeah, he, he might save on the taxes from that. But let's say he did, um, you know, how would it be beneficial for him to cut a check, maybe a, a sal salary for himself, even if that means after cutting that check, you know, he puts it back into the business, right, for se, uh, would that have then helped him? Because he essentially has a paper trail that, um, you know, he's in this business or they establish themselves as they an S Corp, C Corp, we'll get into that. Um, what, what would I, was I right in saying to him, well, in future, you should have done something like that. That's the only way there's really a paper trail that, you know, you do have assets in this business would you agree or disagree no, no I, I would agree but then this thing also goes hand in hand with your record keeping your bookkeeping your accounting okay and then also kind of reviewing your tax planning scenario okay and the reason for that is that first of all you need to know where things are and having your bookkeeping mm -hmm. and accounting up to date uh, helps you on many front one is that you know how your business is doing mm. what's his position you know what is the bottom line what is the what is the proper cash flow right, right. and then knowing that you can plan accordingly mm -hmm. and and make those uh, business decisions uh, knowing better mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then it helps you and provide you with a clear picture of cash flow and in result mm -hmm. it can also help you raise capital you know via loans or mm -hmm. other means uh, if you elaborate, to, elaborate on that, uh, right? How, how would they go about that? So, so basically, any lender would want to look at uh, mm -hmm. your business picture. That's what I'm watching how, right now, Daniel. And, exactly, <laughs> and how they are going to be able to look at if you have your your record keeping yeah. and your books in order. Right. So they will look at okay, what business is doing, what's, the what's coming in, what's coming out. Exactly, exactly, and then ultimately it leads to uh, also to uh, the point where you can make a call, okay, uh, do you possibly or do you or should you uh, change the structure of the business entity mm -hmm. uh, to be able to save more on taxes mm -hmm. and, and optimize things uh, better? Perfect segue. Right. An entity so, you mean? Uh, entity means? S corporation, LLC, uh, should C you, corporation. So should you stay as a sole proprietor or yeah. so should you move towards a different type of entity structure mm -hmm. and gotta keep in mind it's not a one shoe size that fits all so uh, for your industry and for your field of business you may uh, prefer or should have LLC mm -hmm. or you may want to go for uh, depending upon the number of shareholders uh, S corporation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or maybe a C corporation mm -hmm. Each type of entity structure has its pros and cons. Pro, I was going to say pros and cons in uh, taxes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and all, all my mentors, uh, all the people I look up to, they've always uh, said to me is any good businessman, right, which I'm not yet, uh, should be your two best friends, should be uh, your CPA and your lawyer. And they kind of intercross. They go hand in hand, but that's why it's so important because um, having them now – uh, will a will save you a lot of money in the long run the big picture um that you know people again they wait till something disastrous happens and then they have to find someone and build that relationship or have somebody who already has a good knowledge and background of what they they've been doing but uh, he's always repeated that to me and as i got older i realized how important that is so yes you want to double check with a lawyer on lc uh, you establish yourself as a group or S corp, but then on the tax application side of each, you know he's going to recommend that you see a tax uh, a professional and make sure you're doing things um, correct. Uh, I know it's very complicated, but uh, if if you could, you know, sum up the thesis of um, you know S corp say versus 
Uh, the, the typical one probably would be S Corp versus LLC. There's probably less tax benefits to an LLC, but more liability coverage, right? W correct me if I'm wrong. And then vice versa with an S Corp, there's a little, I guess, I don't want to say better, but, uh, it, and like you said, it depends on what your business is. Absolutely. How many, how many yeah, units, absolutely. restaurants you have, or, uh, you know, if you're, if you're in the industrial right if you have a factory or something yeah for example yes yes it definitely it depends on number of different things and 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 then after looking at those things from the taxation point of view then we can advise you okay this is the uh, right and and better uh, structure uh, to have uh, from all these different angles but for example as corporation for a lot of small businesses is is, is the preferred choice and and there is no doubt but when it comes to as corporation and llc's uh, they and along with the partnership are considered past two entities. So mm -hmm. meaning past two entity means that you don't really pay the income taxes on the entity side, but all the income or losses actually pass through mm -hmm. uh, to your individual tax return uh, via K-1, and then you pay eventually the uh, income tax. Right. to the federal and state. Uh, on the entity side, you are paying only the minimum that is required uh, to the state mm -hmm. uh, and uh, to the federal in the case of C Corporation. So just corporate. like tax brackets for how much you make in the business world, is it uh, does the same thing apply for how successful that uh, entity was? Are they going to be taxed accordingly or it does not matter as long as they're in that shield of government? LLC, C Corp, or obviously, no, actually, I'm wrong. It, it, it would be, it would be relevant. It would be, it, it would be relative to how much they made in anything they did. Anything, uh, especially in the case of the past two entities like the LLCs and the S Corporation. However, mm -hmm. uh, with the LLC uh, being a member of the LLC, you don't have to have the uh, to be on a payroll. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you do the partner or the member do not have to be in a payroll. However, in the case of S Corporation the shareholder employee is required to draw the reasonable salary. That Got is it. one of the requirements uh, that is imposed by the IRS. Got it. And the logic behind this is that nobody works for free. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And with the LLC, you are pretty much, uh, you know, you're not tied up with the payroll and all the income and losses that pass through mm -hmm. uh, to your individual tax return, you are basically required to pay the payroll taxes. To the threshold limit for that given year. There's no such thing as a free lunch. My there is no first day, thing. my finance teacher yeah. uh, uh, told me to kind of change our mind and put it in perspective. Is there's no such thing as a free lunch. Somebody's always paying for it. Somebody somewhere is paying for it. Yes. Uh, and 